Hello, and welcome to another tech tutorial video. In this video, we are going to look into how we turn analog signals into some bits that we can actually use. Analog to digital converters are everywhere, and so are their companions, the digital to analog converter. But how do they work? To get a better understanding, let's dive into the SAR type ADC. SAR or successive approximation ADCs are very common and can be found in many microcontrollers along with plenty of options for standalone peripherals. They are relatively easy and cheap to fabricate, are well understood and modeled, making them one of the more common types of ADCs used. Because of this, they are a great choice for getting a deeper understanding how an ADC might work and how to build one. Let's start by pulling up a datasheet and looking at the block diagram. Looking at the MCP3221, which is a single channel 12-bit I2C ADC, we can see in the block diagram that the core to how most ADCs work is by generating a voltage from a DAC and comparing this to an input voltage. It's pretty funny that we need a DAC to make an ADC. To keep the scope of this tutorial down, we will skip the sample and hold portions as they are a bit difficult to build on breadboards given all the leakage and parasitics present. Starting from the core of the ADC, the DAC generates a voltage that we use as a reference for comparing against the analog input voltage. The next major component that is needed is a comparator. This will let us test if our input voltage is higher or lower than our generated reference voltage. A clock signal and some control logic allow us to set the DAC up and step through it until we quantize the input. The successive portion of the name is a hint for how we perform the search. By stepping through the MSB to LSB one bit at a time, we can effectively binary search out the voltage in a fixed known number of steps with repeatable accuracy and known precision. Okay. So how do we build this? Well, that part is straightforward thanks to a circuit known as the R2R ladder DAC. All we need is two values of resistors for this, an R and two times R. One of the key features of this type of DAC is the output impedance is R, allowing us to tune the DAC to the load. While most integrated SAR ADCs use charge distribution DACs, there are still plenty that are implemented with an R2R ladder. For this video, the ladder DAC is much easier and it's what we will use. After the DAC, we need a comparator and a clock signal. In this case, we're using an LM393 comparator, but an op amp would work with some gotchas mainly dealing with saturation delays and group delays. In these types of circuits, comparators are the tool of choice. The comparator will test our reference voltage generated by the DAC to the input voltage and output a signal indicating if the reference voltage is higher or lower. Using this signal, we can build some logic that decides if we need to keep this bit of the DAC high or low as we step through the DAC's bits. The final part is some control logic. In this tutorial, we will use a Teensy and some firmware to act as the control logic but this could be built using some 74 series logic or even modeled out of all NAND gates. Okay, let's build it. But first let's nail down some of our design requirements. We want a 10 bit ADC that can sample at 100 Hertz and has a max input of 3.3 volts. Simple enough, but gives us some guidance to work from. Since we know our sample rate and bit size, we can calculate the minimum clock speed we need to hit our requirements. For every sample, we need 10 clock cycles to complete the binary search and step through every bit before we quantize the value. That means we need to clock at at least 1 kHz to achieve the sample rate. Ideally, we should derate this and allow for margin and design it potentially double the clock rate. Given our goals and the fact that we're building this on a breadboard, I think we'll just settle for what we can achieve. To make this a bit easier, I'm going to use a Teensy 4.0 to handle the clock and control logic. We'll wire up a 10-bit DAC using 500 ohm resistors for the R, 1 kilo ohm resistors for the 2R. 
For our comparator, an LM393 will be good enough. We aren't trying to make the world's fastest ADC. For good measure, I will include some LEDs to show the bit states, the ADC state, comparator state, and an end of conversion flag. Since we are using a Teensy 4.0, our ADC reference voltage, i.e. system voltage, is 3.3 volts. We will use this for our conversion calculations later. Now on to how it works. Because the MSB is one half the DAC reference voltage and each bit down the line to the LSB is one half the previous bit's voltage, you end up with a binary weight of mechanism to quickly approximate the input voltage from. The cycle works like this. At start of conversion and first clock pulse, the MSB is set, thus outputting one half DAC reference voltage. For example, if our system uses five volts, then our DAC is now outputting two and a half volts. We are now comparing the generated voltage to the analog input voltage we want to quantize. If our DAC's voltage is lower than the input voltage, we keep this bit set high. If our DAC voltage is higher, then we want to clear this bit. On the next clock pulse, the process is repeated. The next bit is set high and the comparison is made again. We check the result of the comparison to see if we need to keep this bit set or clear it. By stepping down each bit of the DAC and running the comparison, we can binary search what the input voltage is based on the resulting combination of bits the DAC is set to at end of conversion. In this example, the next bit represents one quarter of the DAC's reference voltage. If our system is 5 volts, then when this bit is set, there is 1.25 volts added to the DAC. Each bit is then half the contribution of the previous bit. The total DAC output voltage is the number of bits that are set, added up, thus giving us our approximated analog input voltage. We can then take this binary number and use it in our code to tell us what our battery voltage is, or even decode information from a wireless signal. Let's read some analog signals. To start with, let's try some DC voltages and see if it's in the ballpark compared to a DMM. Keeping in mind that we don't have a sample and hold, and we may have some compounding errors, INL, DNL, limiting our effective number of bits. But with any luck, we should be able to get within an LSB or two. Measuring with a DMM, we dial in 1.625 volts on the analog in side and can start a conversion stepping down all 10 bits and see if the result is in line with what we expect. Now that we know we can read DC voltages close enough, let's move on to feeding in a sine wave and see if we can pick it out with the ADC. Adding in some code to output our calculated voltages, we can plot a graph of the output and see if it matches up to what we expect. And look at that, even though we don't have a sample and hold, we can clearly pick out a 100 hertz sine wave. This was a fun video to make, and I hope everyone enjoyed and learned about how SAR ADCs work. And if you end up making your own ADC, please let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.